Hi, I'm Joss. Hi, I'm Claudia. And this is the Let's Get Down to Business podcast. We're two cousins on opposite ends of the globe with a lot of opinions about figure skating. And we're here to deliver the news, recaps, and light a candle for all the skaters who tripped on their toe pick at this nationals. Happy New Year, Joss. Happy New Year. It's 2021. We are out of hell year, but we still seem to be in hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very apt description of everything. How did your New Year's go? What you do? Uh, nothing, since California's on lockdown. So New Year, same me, <laughs> as the meme <laughs> says. New Year, same COVID. Yes. Uh, however, I am drinking a very good cider. Uh, if you guys are fans of cider, this is the Stem Ciders Hibiscus Session Apple Cider. It's very, very nice. It's only 4.3%, though. So <laughs> if you're hey, looking to... Look, uh, there is alcohol content in it, so I will 100% drink it. And that's... It sounds so good. I'm so sad that it's not available in, in Australia. So you'll probably have to send me a case. That sounds like a plan because it's it's very good. This is my first time drinking the cider, and I'm a fan. Yeah, I was drinking cider over my kind of celebration, New Year celebration weekend away with my friends. And it's just, I don't think it would be as good as this hibiscus tea infused apple cider. Like that already just sounds a game to me. There was another uh, brand on Instagram that I saw and it was also ciders infused with tea. So that could just be the new thing for 2021. That could turn this entire year around is tea infused ciders. Maybe, definitely. Counting on it. I think my favorite cider that I've ever drunk was like, I can't remember the name, which pisses me off so much, but it was like an agave nectar infused cider and it was so, so, so good. So I'm keen to find out what it actually was. But let's stop talking about alcohol because we will get drunk on what we're going to talk about next, which is Russian nationals. <laughs> Russian men's chaos. We'll, we'll get drunk on Russian men's chaos. There's enough of it to be had. Absolutely. So like always, we're going to split this into two parts. First part is going to be ice dance and men's. And next episode, we are going to tackle. And I tackle is a very choice word because... The ladies and pairs events were huge. And so stay tuned for that episode, which is coming up next. But yeah, let's get started with Ice Dance and Men's at Russian Nationals 2021. Yeah, I think uh, Ice Dance was perhaps a little bit less eventful than I would have thought. However, uh, third to fifth was absolutely extremely eventful. And Russian men, of course, brought the chaos as they normally do with a surprise, a happy surprise bronze medalist. But why don't we go ahead and start with Ice Dance? Why don't we start with our gold medal winners, uh, Alexandra Stepanova and Ivan Bukin? We have new ice dance champions. How exciting is this? Because unfortunately, Victoria Sinitsna and Nikita Katalopov did not compete here. But that means Stepana from Bukin were able to come out for the first time this season because they've had a rough season ravaged with COVID and all that. They came out for the first time this season and... What did you think of their showing? I I mean, truly, this entire season has been ravaged by COVID, not just Sasha and Yvonne here. Yes, definitely. (laughs) um, Okay, so their short program, let's talk about that first, uh, was to the Moulin Rouge soundtrack. Um, It seems like they have a new cut of the Moulin Rouge soundtrack. Yes. I, I, I feel like even with the new cut, I have ambivalent feelings about it I don't necessarily like it any better than the old cut uh particularly the timing around the 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 smoochy smoochy smooch (laughs) at the end of the program (laughs) the little smoochy smooch uh with unfortunately no GOE but I would actually give the smoochy smooch less GOE than last season because they changed their music cut so they have the traditional three music cuts their first two songs they have kept from last season diamonds are a girl's best friend and all of that and then they changed their last little cut to the show must go on and I was like "Mm, this Mulan Rouge program was already like doing well to keep away from the Tessa and Scott Mulan Rouge and I was just like oh this is just mm, no it was unique before but this isn't really doing it and then the choreography going in and out of everything just didn't feel as 
good as last year's, in my opinion. And then the smoochy smooch at the end just felt like, oh, we're going to smooch at the end because we had it last season and the smooch was great. But like, let's lock lips and just go poof just for the sake of it. <laughs> yeah, let's show people that we can kiss. We know that you can kiss, guys. We got it. We understand. Uh, <laughs> but I think that the timing and the choreography just leading into it uh, seemed a little bit less natural uh, after they changed it. And the kiss in general, obviously, I have feelings about because dance and pairs is already so heteronormative in every sense of the word. <laughs> um, so just kind of having that kiss there just to have it now, it almost feels like, is just kind of like, if you're going to change it make sure you change it so that it you know flows into it like it used to but anyways I don't see any marked improvement with this new mm. the new cut and the new I guess choreography leading it and out of the elements but yeah I mean they still did win by a decent margin so in the rhythm dance they hit all their key points level four everything else as well they did get a uh, one point deduction because the, their last curve lift was extended, but that still landed them with an 87.28. So like, good on them. Um, and their free skate was to Cry Me a River, performed by Justin Timberlake. Very moody, and I, I friggin' love it. I really liked this program from them. I feel like, personally, Sasha needs to get deeper into her edges, but to be honest, I'm just glad we're able to see them compete again this season, and finally let them get their first national title. They were also extremely happy when they won. They were so cute, like, in their reactions. I was like, this is yes. adorable. I enjoy this. Just some just some, in, some happiness for us <laughs> b- before we end the in chaos the, for the rest of this episode. Yeah. In the green room, Ivan was so cute. So uh, when the camera was on them, you could see him kind of, like, waiting for Sasha to give him a kiss after they won. And he was just like... Mm, hey give me a kiss <laughs> and that was like really similar to I think I can't remember what year or what competition it was but you there was another there's another clip of Sasha doing the exact same thing like following her head around waiting for Ivan to give her a kiss like in the kiss and cry after program and I was just like oh this is so ooh. we've been ravaged by adorableness is that a word I don't know but we've been ravaged by it <laughs> we've been ravaged they also got ravaged by uh the judges giving them tens in PCS oh um, yeah there were a lot of them <laughs> there were the judge number four loved them they gave them three tens in PCS and they got six tens overall with most of them coming in performance so they got three tens in uh the performance component of the performance component score <laughs> program component score um but look i mean considering how many tens we saw from uh Sneetson and katsalabov i'm like okay cool fine whatever all right it's fine. russian nationals <laughs> seems consistent consistent with inflation <laughs> yes but i'm yeah i love them very very much i prefer them as my top russian dance team just my preference do you have any closing thoughts otherwise let's let's move on to the rest of the field i just think they're really cute we've been ravaged by adorableness uh something else that we have been ravaged by is greatest showman programs i'm sure you guys can all agree <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, let's count that along with Two Done Hot. Although we know that Two Done Hot takes the cake and like for everything of in terms of way too many programs to Two Done Hot, um, but Greatest Showman's <laughs> up there, I reckon. Yeah, definitely up there. Uh, so why don't we talk about our silver medalists, Tiffany Sigorski and Jonathan Guerrero? We've seen these programs before. We've talked about these programs before. Uh, there's nothing too much new, I reckon. Um, in their rhythm dance, they got three out of four of their key points. That music cut at the start, though, it's still, it gets me every single time. I'm just like, yay, the greatest showman. And then I'm like, oh, there's a reason why I keep putting this in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> but they got 84.02, yeah. came in second. What did you think of their free dance? Uh, I mean, I think everything went pretty well for them. I just think that they didn't perform quite as well. They weren't quite as clean as uh, Sasha and Yvonne. But I mean, overall, nothing that we haven't said before about them. I think their program has definitely shown improvement, not in the music cuts, but, <laughs> but yeah. just in the way <laughs> that they are performing and skating them. Uh, I think that they were also super cute because at the end of the free dance, they, they kissed were. each other. <laughs> 
We stan. It was so cute. And also, because we keep getting ravaged by adorableness, we, we also saw Stepana from Buchan being supportive and genuinely clapping for Zahorsky and Guero. And I was just like, we we love this support. We love the support. We we love uh, teammates cheering on teammates. So uh, nothing we haven't said before about these two. We have definitely talked at length about their programs. But overall, it was a pretty great showing for them. Just not enough to catch up with Stepana and Buchan. Not that roost-fed politicking would allow them, I reckon. <laughs> Not that that would ever happen with politicking. Let's be, uh, let's be serious Let's here. be but, real. Uh, yeah, I, I do think, however, that Stepana and Vugan skated, skated better than, than uh, Tiffany and Jonathan. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Um, all right, and our bronze medalists were Anastasia Skopskova and Kirill Alyoshin. They are the ones who skated to Bonnie and Clyde in the rhythm dance and Never Tear Us Apart by the good old Fifty Shades soundtrack. Oi. <laughs> oi, um, oi vey. <laughs> before we start talking about them, I do have to say that uh, third to fifth place were extremely close and fraught yeah. with anguish. Everyone was oh. upset and full of anguish at some point in time. Uh, maybe a Terry could find an appropriate Renaissance era poem for their Instagrams, <laughs> their respective Instagrams. I'm sure she has a lot in her drafts. <laughs> well, yeah, just share them around, a Terry. You know, spread the love. <laughs> <laughs> Slide into the DMs with a Renaissance era poem for each. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't think she needs to slide in. She need. She'll send them like full full packages in person with flowers, of course, and maybe a Louis Vuitton <laughs> handbag while she's at it. <laughs> Okay, why don't we let's actually talk about our bronze medalists. Uh, <laughs> these folks, they hit three of their key points. They got a yes, 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 no. Um, again, kind of like uh, Tiffany and Jonathan, I feel like we have talked at length about our thoughts about the programs in general. Uh, this was a pretty good showing for them in the rhythm dance. But however, in the free dance... <laughs> I just get zero connection between the two. And I swear, the free dance was the day of twizzle nightmares. So many people bubbled in their twizzles and gave everyone heart attacks. Here, Nastya bubbled in hers. And it really was, you know, the continuation of the chaotic free dance moment. Yeah, I think that uh, after the bobble and the twizzles and the free dance, I could really see them kind of like lock up. That is not a Fifty Shades yeah. uh, <laughs> <reference>. <laughs> But they really just kind of like, I felt like this moment of panic. Uh, more so she than he, I feel like. But this uh, really reminds me of how like Misha Kolyada was like always beating himself up for like screwing up. And yeah. then this season he came back like so strong. And like when he would make a mistake, he would just kind of like bounce back really quick and it wouldn't like mess up the rest of his program. Perhaps Misha could uh, take them to school for a little bit and uh, give them a lesson about perhaps not panicking after a small mistake in their program because you could really kind of feel the change just in the way that they were moving. Yeah, look, I I reckon he could deliver that. He could deliver a lecture to a lot of Ice Dance and Pairs teams because they get so, (laughs) like, some of them are better at, you know, at concealing their mistakes and kind of being able to continue their programs um, without kind of falling apart. But you can see that like even like one small mistake, like really minuscule mistake at the end of their program, they're ready to ball their eyes out that it's, it's like somebody's cat died and they're just like, Oh my God. And I killed it. It's, it's very dramatic. Yeah. Like I, I get the psychology behind it, but it's still, it's still very dramatic. It's a lot. And, and the, the, the sad part about it is that, like, it really starts to affect the rest of their program. Um, and definitely mm. here between third and fifth, you can really tell that just, like, the smallest things made all of these athletes super anxious because the margin was so small between all of them. Speaking of, let's move to our fourth medalists. That sounds so weird. Fourth place medalists, I'd rather say. Um, <laughs> and that is Sofia Sevchenka and Igor Eremenka, who are coached by the same team as Stepana from Buchan. So that is their coaches are Alexander Sfinin and Irina Zhuk. And as a side note, they released a, a training video of like the Sfinin and Zhuk team. And it was like really nicely filmed and all of that. But uh, anyway... I really enjoyed Sophia and Igor. They also haven't been out this entire season because their school kind of went on 
lockdown as one should after COVID infected them all. And they're just like, okay, we are not going to any competitions. And I'm like, responsibility. Wow. <laughs> haven't seen that one before. Here we see responsibility. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so it's their first competition back this season. Their rhythm dance is to burlesque. And girl, that was a lot of ex-Tina that we had. <laughs> it was a lot. It was a lot of, uh, yes, a, a lot of runs from, from Christina. <laughs> but they had really, really nice twizzles. They're really nice and fast through the fin step. They hit their key points of yes, yes, no, yes. I thought they had a great RD. No one says RD. I mean rhythm dance. <laughs> <laughs> it's like R2D2. <laughs> Did they have a really good R2-D2? That, that should... Oh, I, I don't think Star Wars would qualify for a musical. Um, but, you know, I think Boyan Jing, if he, you know, transferred to Ice Dance, he'd definitely make a play for a, a Star Wars rhythm dance. R2-D2. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one can dress up as R2-D2 and the other can dress up as three, C-3PO, you know? Oh my gosh, imagine. Imagine All the People by John Lennon. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no... Uh, let's talk about their free dance, which was to The Illusions by Maxime Rodriguez. And I have to point out, did you see that costume change from Sophia at the beginning? She came with oh my like, God, yeah, it was so subtle, but I was just going back. I was just like, Ooh, okay. This is funky. I like this. Yeah. It wasn't quite a, uh, frozen at the Hyperion full on Elsa costume change in the middle of let it go, but it was, it was subtle and it was very nice. I enjoyed it. I also just think the program in general is really, really awesome. I think that it's really unique. I think it was a very nice uh, change between the Fifty Shades of Grey with a uh, very little connection between <laughs> between the two of them. I think that this is definitely very different, a, a welcome difference. Yeah, absolutely. They had really cool transitions. I thought it was a pretty cool ass, you know, free dance as well. They came in fourth. Overall, with a 194.29 and 116.46 in the free dance, I really, really like them. I think that they're going to be making the push for the top three or top four if, you know, you count uh, Sunitsyn and Katsalapov. I think they're really going to make, uh, yeah, a push for the top Russian teams very soon. Uh, however, there are a couple of teams on their tail who we will talk about who were, were very distraught about uh, coming in fifth place. And I mean, obviously, the competition yes. was really tight. But uh, let's talk about our fifth place finishers, Elizaveta Kudaberdieva and Igor Bazin. Oh, my God, you got her name first try. Good I on did. you. And I'm drinking cider. You know, it's the cider. The cider helps. I swear to God. It's the cider. It's it's the habit. It is. So their rhythm dance was to the artist soundtrack and Sing Sing Sing. They had an improvement. They had an improvement. They hit three out of four of their key points. And then uh, <laughs> Blessed Eagle. And then, then. <laughs> Blessed Eagle tripped up in the twizzles because this competition was great for twizzles, right? And he dropped a level, but he also, I found out the out at the end he has hot pink guards and I'm like I'm so here for it I love this energy uh, it really reminds me of oh gosh we'll talk about him later but Mark's shirt uh who is our bronze medalist yes. for men in the mm -hmm. short program really kind of if Mark had hot pink guards that would really just just cap off his his short program costume but <laughs> we'll talk mm -hmm. about that later yeah and okay so Lisa and Eagles free dance was to the experience by Ludovico Ainati and Okay, because you keep mentioning this, I'm like, the first note that I made was, these shades of red are not complimentary on the color wheel. And <laughs> oh my gosh, I knew you were going to say some shit like that. <laughs> I was like, is she going to talk about the color wheel? <laughs> I was just like, this is my first note. I'm like, oh, you you influenced me. And I'm like, oh, now I can't, you know, those things that you're just like, once you pointed out. You can't unsee it. I can't unsee this. <laughs> Maybe I'll slide into their DMs with a color wheel. <laughs> Terry can send the poetry. I'll just I'll just send a color wheel. <laughs> However, I did find uh, the I guess the theatrical elements of this free dance a little bit toned down. I still find the program in general a little bit twee and kitschy. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't decided if that's good kitschy or bad kitschy quite yet, but but nevertheless, a little twee and kitschy still. Um, however, Lisa was very, very unhappy, appeared outwardly oh, yeah. very unhappy with uh, 
I guess she tripped in the Twizzles. Uh, she tripped and got a level three on her Twizzles. Yeah, she looked like she wanted to cry at the end. But yeah, no, firstly, addressing the whole tween kitsch situation. I completely agree. I love the kitsch and twee um, just because I've got <laughs> I got that part in my personality. And also because like I'd rather twitch and key with like a a connection than a regular program with no connection. So I'm here for it. Eagle almost tripped over his toe pick again in the free skate. It was really subtle though, but oh, they got hammered in, in the free dance. I felt so bad for them. Um, their one footstep sequence, she got a level four, he got a level one and which left at least like one point on the table with that. But obviously that affects everything else like PCS and stuff. They only got, and I say only got, but they got a 114.67 in the free dance with an overall score of 192.68. So yeah, I mean, they did come in fifth. I feel like they had hopes of getting on the podium. Um, but yeah, just a little unfortunate. Yeah. And if we're talking about like how many points were left on the table, especially with with that one foot step sequence, we're talking about literally. So the fourth place finishers, they got 194.29 overall. And our fifth place finishers got 192.68 overall. So we're literally talking about like one and a half point difference. So the difference between literally like that one foot step sequence could really have cost them like a standing in the end. And the Twizzles as well, definitely. It, it's all it's it all ties in together. Um, but talking about tripping and falling, oh no, <laughs> more tripping and falling. We're going to talk about sixth place finishes, Annabelle Morozov and Andre Bargain. <laughs> so their rhythm dance was to "Funny Honey" from Chicago, "Sing Sing Sing," and it don't mean a thing. And Andre, he tripped in the fin step. I haven't seen this all season. Poor guy. Um, but their key points ended up being no, yes, no, no, with a little carrot at the end, which means that there was an interruption of four beats or less. They also fell in the pattern dance type. It was a shocker of a rhythm dance, to be honest. I felt so bad. I felt so bad for them. And Nikolai Morozov's reaction to their fall was just... It, it was like the world had ended for him, <laughs> which like fair enough, but it was so dramatic. Like I couldn't help but like let out a little giggle. But, like <laughs> I felt bad for them. I really did. I did too. I mean, they went down like dominoes because they didn't want to detach from one another. So she literally yeah. like dragged him down like dominoes, just like that line in Taylor Swift's Gold Rush with her hair <laughs> falling down like dominoes. Down went Annabelle and Andre just like dominoes. <laughs> It was it was not a good rhythm dance. Yeah, I don't know, like, because I'm not an ice dancer myself. If anybody is out there, please let us know, because I I would be very interested. Um, but when, when you fall, I'm I'm wondering if pulling your partner down with you is safer than you going down by yourself, because ice dancers are close together, right? And I mean, going down by yourself, you know, you're going down, legs are in the air, blades are flying around. Anyway. Let us know. It's just like, is it is is the safety risk worth the point that you would, I guess, not lose for separating from well, one another? If that kind of makes sense. Judging by their faces, I think I think they I think safety is not even a concern for them. I think <laughs> safety, I think falling not, is more. I mean, safety disastrous. was not a consideration in the entire arena. Very right? true. But. Very true. It, it's very much in line of like Hermione Granger going, "I'm going to bed before either of you come up with another clever idea to get us killed." Or worse, expelled. And I'm like, I feel like or worse falling. Is, oh, no. Yeah, or worse falling is where they're at. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Nikolai is the Hermione in this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. But Annabelle and Andre did pull back for the free dance. They came third in the free dance. And that was to Terra Rosa by Havasi with uh, Annabelle in a discount spinning out-esque Tessa Virtue dress. Look. Oh, no, this dress. Oh, yeah, this <laughs> dress. I still, I don't really connect with the program. That's just me personally. But I really did think they skated with good speed and flow. And it was a great redemption skate for them after after their rhythm dance. What did you think? Yeah, it wasn't quite a revenge dress. 
we all know what a revenge dress is, but it was, however, <laughs> a revenge free dance. Uh, they they did get third. I think it was well deserved, uh, but just not quite enough to make up in the standings. They did end up sixth uh, for the deficit that that was in the rhythm dance, unfortunately. But yeah, you know, kudos to them though because they gave us a lot of drama, and <laughs> we do love. We're drama. always here for drama. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think overall, you know, that was a, it was a decent, decent ice dance, uh, decent ice dance event. We got enough drama and we got pretty, we, we knew kind of what was going to happen up, up at the top, top of echelons. Even with the absence of, uh, Snitsuna and Katsalapov, congratulations to Stepanova and Bukin. Very, very happy to see them again. And, uh, a ton of happenings in the third to fifth and I guess even sixth, uh, rankings here and an, an, an unfortunate amount of trips in the twizzles we hope to not yes. see those all together ever again because it was extremely unfortunate let's segue into the men because something was wrong with the ice i swear to god because the men also had a bunch of trips in really odd places so how about let's move on to men's yeah, why don't we start with our gold medalist, always a fave, Mikhail Holiada, with his Let's Get Loud, also always a fave. <laughs> oh, yes. uh, he won by a little over 30 points. Uh, so well deserved. Love him. So happy to see him back this season. I think he just showed so much growth mentally uh, with his jumps. With these programs together, I think was just a killer combo of the short program and the free state. I, I think this was just such a prime season for him. Absolutely. And in the short program, like, phew, that triple axle was just textbook perfection in my book. And, oh, he's just so good. Like, quality just oozes out of him. I've said this before. Quality oozes out of him. And, I mean, except for the part where he almost tripped on his toe pick. Um, <laughs> as they all did. <laughs> as they all did. Um, but that free skate opened with a perfect quad toe triple toe i mean i think his only like major mistake was um the triple lutz euler double salco but overall this program is truly a work of art i i really think that if you know every let's say the olympics were like right now i really think that he could really challenge for a spot on the podium i really oh, do oh yeah a hundred percent look i wouldn't be mad if misha kept this program for the Oli season would you oh my gosh imagine i think these would be perfect programs for next season because there's so much contrast between the two of them he gets to show some personality in the short program and the free skate is just beautiful like it's impeccable i love it so much i petition for misha to keep both programs for olympic season i petition it too a terry why don't you petition it by sliding into the dms add like a really lovely renaissance <laughs> program to go with it and maybe we'll convince him um but am i that half of the podcast i'm that half of the podcast <laughs> the one that's delegated to slide into the dms uh, but you know what? I reckon also Ilya Averbuk would want to slide into the DMs as well because <laughs> with the Russian one like one TV coverage, you saw like Ilya miming, oh, like Misha didn't do this movement where he extends his hands from his head. He didn't do what he didn't do it like this and do it well enough. And so I think he's got some notes for Misha. Um, but it was so funny. I love the split screen um, with the Russian broadcasts. We get to see the coaches. We get to see the choreographers, um, the commentators. It adds to the drama and we love it. Yeah, it was it was pretty great. But overall, such a good event for Misha. Not perfect. Small mistakes on the axle and the flip and the free skate. But overall, you know, far and away, the gold medalist. Uh, let's move on to our silver medalist, Makar Ignatov, our uh, angsty, angsty soul here. <laughs> I love our angsty soul. Like, I, my love for him has grown as the season has progressed. <laughs> because I was just going to say that. Really? <laughs> I, yeah, I, I love him. Oh, that. God. It's, so at Russian Test Gates, when we first covered him um, for this season, he was like the, the epitome of chaotic Russian man because – his conditioning was just not there. He, like, his expression was just, like, panting because he was, like, so out, <laughs> like, not fit. And then he's gotten better and better. He was gassed. Yeah, he was so gassed. And he's gotten better and better as the season has progressed. So has the angst. And so, like, yeah, 
good on you, Mecca. You came second with gorgeous, gorgeous quad loops in both the short and the free skate. In the short program, though, I the quad loop didn't get a single rotation call, even though in the slow mo you can you can. You can clearly see if if not an under rotation, it got like it definitely was a cue if if not the under rotation. But because it's Russian nationals, um, Makar just blinded them with uh, with I don't know his angst. They were too busy uh, experiencing his anguish to notice his under rotation. <laughs> I mean, he they just can't go on without him. Wink, they can't wink. Go on um, <laughs> like, look at you. We we won't. We can't go on without you. Bye, Kalia. <laughs> Uh, but he, yeah, he did. He did get a ninety-eight point three zero in the short program, so very, very well done. But of course, we are all here for the <laughs> epitome of angst. Je suis malade for the free skate, and I was just like, my first note was, "It's Amber Glenn morose ballad time." Woohoo! Oh gosh, this is Gravity by Sarah Bareilles. Gravity and Je suis malade. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. He really he here. I I really noted that there was a big improvement because he didn't look like he was dying at the end. <laughs> I remember. What was that? Was that Russian Cup or was it? it no, it was at um, it was at Russian Test Skates where oh, he was yeah. like, it looked like he was about to pass out. Yes, it did. Um, however, I do think that he could use a new choreographer perhaps because I think that this choreography is a little flat, but he has so much expression within him that is just waiting to burst forth like a fountain. Uh, I feel like he could really do a lot of good with his uh, emotional depth if he was awarded with some choreography to match yeah maybe Ilya Averbuk would uh team up with a Terry you know <laughs> g- give angst lessons angst not that Makan needs angst lessons but just like he needs a boost in his angst showing he should give angst lessons there are some folks that like the 50 shades of gray true. folks they can very, very angst true. lessons <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. Macaw, come on. I mean, his ISU bio hobbies are cinema and music. So like cinema. He's got it covered. He's got it covered. Um I, I really also hope that he's got his ankles covered because I fear for his ankles. I was just like, ooh <laughs> Slow mos, please. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but yeah, I think overall it was a really, really good showing for him. I think he his conditioning looks like it's improved so much over the season, and these programs, I think, exude his energy. I just wish he, that he had choreography to match. Congratulations on the silver medal, but we have a surprise bronze medalist. Mark Kondratwik, he's coached by Svetlana Sokolovskaya. Oh my gosh, Joss, what do you think? I mean, first of all, there is always an underdog with a national storyline, okay? Like, it happens in Russia, it happens in the States. <laughs> Literally, there's mm-hmm. always someone who comes in and either gets a place on the podium or just has, like, a really great underdog storyline, and this is totally him. So he was second in the free skate and third in the short program. Uh, however, the gap in the short program points was too large to make up. Uh, there was not quite an eight point difference in the short program, but a little bit over two point difference in the free skate between him and Makar. Um, but the difference in the short program was just too large to make up. So he didn't end up third overall. It could also be because he doesn't have the highest base value out of all of these men, but really such a good showing for him because a lot of other folks were just kind of chaotic and just not super consistent. My first couple of notes for a short program was huge triple axel, great quad sal, claps from me. Um, I thought he was rough around the edges, but he's got spring in his legs and like I enjoyed him. He skated to summertime. Um, he also was wearing, I don't know what he was wearing. Literally, my first comment was, what are you wearing? <laughs> I mean, what is he not wearing here? He's wearing a lot of things. <laughs> Uh, so I used to work at an elementary school and a lot of classes, especially the younger grades, used to bring silly string, like in the spray oh, cans, you yeah. would shake and they mm-hmm. would make the shaky shake noise. Um, and they would also bring glow sticks and they would have like a party. This is literally like when you walk into the kindergarten classroom and there are people spraying silly string and other people waving glow sticks around. It all happened on his shirt. He got everything. <laughs> he was the uh. canvas. 
He was the canvas, exactly. His free program was to After the Nightmare and Swan Lake. I enjoyed this. I, it wasn't, it was no Daisuke Takahashi Cyber Swan. It wasn't that level, but it was really good. His, his axle landings though make the hairs on my chin stand up because honestly, it, it gets so, like his face gets so low, like to the ice and it's all off center and the landing is really, really chaotic. I was like, your chin's going to get scraped, mate. <laughs> yes, definitely. I I honestly am just so happy that because everyone else is so inconsistent sometimes, people are plagued with injury. I'm so glad that someone emerged with this consistency, even between the short program and the free skate, because as we know, sometimes Russian men don't <laughs> do that. About it. So just so happy for him, you know, that, that he was our bronze medalist. Uh, I mean, obviously, the programs were not perfect. But I mean, overall, he was he was great. I, I just enjoyed seeing him so much. So congratulations on a bronze medal mark. We're going to move on to Andre Mozilyov, who is our pewter slash fourth place medalist. He didn't wait. Oh, why have I been saying fourth place medalist? I, I've got pewter stuck in my head. No, fourth place finisher, <laughs> Andre Mozilyov. And he is my Ron Weasley. Um, I absolutely love Andre. His short program was to Sadness Part 2 by Enigma. And oh no, that quad flip attempt. Oh no, he does try. He tries all the time. He really does. He tries. He tries. But it honestly, it looks like he never would have made it. Like he, it does not look like he should ever have put it in a program. Like good on you for trying. He needs to take that quad flip back to the drawing board. I remember this happened in previous <laughs> programs too. It just needs some retooling. But I mean, good on him for trying it again. And he came back with a great quad toe, triple toe true, combo. True, true, so. true. He did manage to land the quad flip in the free skate, The his free skate to the man with the harmonica. Um, honestly, in my opinion, it does not look like it should happen, but he still got a 1.57, he got 1.57 points in GOE. I want someone to believe in me like that, man. <laughs> <laughs> I want someone like to believe in me like that too. Maybe I should go to Russia and become Russian and skate there <laughs> to get those bonus GOE points. But, oh, he didn't really have a great free skate, to be honest. Like, he no. slipped off the edge of the second quad toe. He did a waxel, um, then tagged double toe on the end of that. He goes into his jumps rather slowly, which bothers me. Because, like, I like everything else about his skating. He was so upset, though. And they kept, like, panning the camera to him. I was like, can, can we not? Just <laughs> Girl, this cameraman. These cameramen. I'm like, stop. You were so close to their faces. And you're like... As soon as they start crying, like this bubble was like almost crying in the kiss and cry. I'm like, wait, like turn the camera away. Like you, d I was like, can we not focus on the ice cream? Ice cream sponsors. Great time for ice cream sponsors. Exactly. The ice cream sponsors were back. And like all of this gets broadcast over like the huge, like, um, what do you call it? The mega, not mega, like <laughs> the screens are Megatron. 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 I don't know why that came into mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that came, <laughs> came into mind. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm really <laughs> tired today. <laughs> but on the big screens and everyone can see it. And I'm like, I would not enjoy seeing a real close up of myself, myself after I've skated looking like a hot ass mess no. and crying. And like, even if a skater is upset, like, don't broadcast it for that long. You know what I mean? Just yeah. give them some space. Give, them some space. Give, give a little tear and like enough, like move away. But yeah, overall, probably not. I mean, obviously not the programs that he was hoping to come out with this week. But yeah, he ended up in fourth. And in fifth, <laughs> my fave. Oh my gosh. Our, our fave chaotic boy. It is the historic return. Am I saying not, that ironically? It, 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 he is our fave chaotic boy, though. We, he, <laughs> he really is. Like, there is some irony in it, but, like, we, we can't stop talking about him. And so, of course, we are talking about the fated return of Alexander Samarin. Okay, well, let's start with a short program. Uh, it's to a Russian folk song. Uh, like like we were talking about before, I think my beliefs about this have solidified that I do really like the sentiment of the music. I, I do enjoy that he is skating to Russian folk music, but I don't think this is quite his energy. And the costume is just not there. 
don't think anything is really coming together here. Look, have Sasha's costumes ever been there is a real question. That's a no. Um, Definitely no. But yeah, look, I think it could be his vibe, the Russian folk song, but the the, the selection of music, I... The first half, I was like, I don't think this is great for skating. But, you know, he he, he went down on the quad lutz, but came back with a lovely triple lutz, triple toe. Like, all right. No, not okay. enough to, to, to catch the podium, but all right. it was all right. Uh, and then in the free skate to keeping me alive. Oh, that opening oh. quad toe. It's so sketchy. I was worried. I was I was worried for our friend here. It's so sketchy. And it's also, I, I'm sorry, Sasha, but it's so boring between the jumping elements. It really is. I literally had written down here, why is he not doing anything between his jumps? <laughs> Maybe, okay, to, to be fair to him, he did just have COVID. Maybe he's like literally trying to catch his breath. Like like maybe he li- did literally like tone down his program a little bit. But it maybe could he also should have just smelt some salts. That would have helped him. Oh no, <laughs> too soon, too soon, <laughs> <laughs> too soon, too soon. But I mean, the highlight for me was that finding out that Sasha has a Batman shake bottle. <laughs> I'm like, you and I can be twins. <laughs> that oh is my, my preferred shake too. <laughs> I mean, has anyone seen Alexander Samarin and Batman in the same room? I haven't. I have not either. Maybe, maybe that's why there's, you know, it's so boring between the jumping elements because he's just like zipping back back and forth between Gotham, you know? Oh, he gets in the Batmobile. He gets in the Batmobile. <laughs> and like, he's so fast that, you know, we just don't really see him. And he has to be a bit boring between the jumping elements. And he comes back to jump. There we go. You know what he should do? This is the wrong strategy. He okay. should add some choreography between the jumping elements so no one detects that he is Batman. It's a distraction. He's going about this all wrong. I disagree. Sasha, really? I maybe, disagree with Maybe he, he could <laughs> chuck on some like Clark Kent glasses to his uh, to his costumes. I mean, they're, they're already... Um, we're mixing superheroes. <laughs> I know we're mixing superheroes, but like same universe. But, you know, just chuck some glasses on, add something to your costumes, and maybe they can be even like more chaotic. This this is it. We'll slide into the DMs. Actually, I will. This is my role on the pod. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, that mm-hmm, definitely. Make sure that the color wheel is like correctly used. Okay. I'll, I'll do it. Although yeah. Batman mostly wears black and gray. And I yellow, don't think he'll so. listen, but... <laughs> Let's talk about our seventh place finisher, Piotr Gumenik. Oh, poor guy. He did not have a good outing here. Um, first of all, he was injured. So, sir, please uh, take care of yourself. Uh, in the short program, I couldn't really tell that he was in pain, but I think that it started to become apparent in the free skate. Um, I think it his short program just aggravated it, maybe. So, like, he, he knew he was competing with a back injury, he said it that he was competing with a back end injury like I get it but why um he went down on the triple axle he hung on to the quad sow um did a great triple lutz triple loop like he always does but it just really set things up for the free skate to be not great the free skate ended up being not quite great uh he had his hand down on the triple axle and then he went down on the second triple axle you could really kind of it started to become apparent like i was saying that that he was not competing at his best it was overall probably a bit of a disappointment for him considering that at Rostalicum he had such a great outing and i really really enjoyed both of his programs there but you know overall seventh here probably not the weekend that he was looking for yeah look i really bloody love his uh phantom of the opera program like who who couldn't love a a Phantom of the Opera program where the costume has like wings on it. Like you can't not love it, but you could so tell his back was bothering him because his normal iconic, you know, spin variation where he's like reaching up into the sky. You could, you could tell his back was a lot, a lot stiffer and he didn't get the flex. He didn't show the flexibility he normally does. And so I was just like, Oh honey, please, please save yourself. But, um, I'll take that program, you know, it, it wasn't super disastrous, but it still hurt all of our hearts. I know. And uh, we hope that he takes his wings and flies very quickly to his physical therapist to <laughs> yes. to, to help us back. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, let's uh, not be skating on that back injury anymore. 
Uh, let's talk about our eighth place finisher, Artyom Kovlyov. Uh, oh, man, these costumes. <laughs> oh. He still has the rhinestone belt, Joss. He, he still, still has the rhinestone belt. At least it's not like flapping around this time. It's stayed on yeah. his body this time. That's a plus. I mean, he did not stay on his feet during his step sequence, though. No. Unfortunately not. He fell on a twizzle. Damn that ice. Imagine if there was a rut that everyone just fell in. But like, look, he's my he's a really fave chaotic boy because we don't we never know what to expect from him. He is coached by Alexander Volkov and Evgeny Plushenko. Does that explain the costumes, do you reckon? I'm not sure. It's still very life as a highway in the free skate. Uh, <laughs> if you did not listen to our Ristalicum Cup episode, uh, I said that he looked like part of Lightning McQueen's pit crew. He still does that. I mean, obviously, the costume hasn't changed. <laughs> still but does. <laughs> still, still very much the life as a highway. acid wash jeggings are back. acid wash jeggings. I don't think I could pull those off. And I've tried many a jegging in my life. And I just haven't come across the acid wash personally. The, the 2000s are long gone, <laughs> um, but he was eking stuff out. It, look, it wasn't pretty, but he got he got the job done in his free skate. He did. He had really, okay, to his credit, he had really great quad styles in both the short program and the yeah, free skate. Yeah, he did. I enjoyed both of those, but yeah, it's, <laughs> you never know what's going to happen with him. And this time it wasn't, wasn't quite enough. He ended up in eighth. Yes, the rest of the rest of the men's field was super chaotic. However, the one steadfast man that we had this season, our fave, fave of the pod, uh, Mikhail Kolyada, as we said in a previous episode, they pronounce his name Kolada. Uh, so Mikhail and his uh, sibling Pina Kolada <laughs> have been steadfast in, we have been steadfast in our love for him this season and his two programs. The The Free Skate is truly a masterpiece and the short program was the perfect comeback program. So we're just so happy to see him at the top of the podium. Uh, congratulations to Makar, our favorite uh, teenage rom-com angsty boy, and Mark, our surprise bronze medalist. Yes, and if you like Pina Coladas as well as Mikhail Colada, <laughs> give, leave us a review and give some five-star love. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we're not there yet, Claudia, please. I know, <laughs> but I just had to say, if you like pina coladas, hey, <laughs> ma- hey, that could be an ex- exhibition song for Mikhail. Or maybe Ted Barton can come on um, and do an exhibition because he's the one who always says colada. Oh my gosh, I have so many DMs to slide into. Uh, why don't we slide into our kiss and cry, though? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to start off our kiss and cry with a book recommendation, like always. And because Mikhail Kolyada has blessed us this season with his gorgeous free skate inspired by The White Crow, which is a 2018 biographical drama film centered on the life and career of the ballet dancer Rudolf Nureyev, we're going to recommend the book Tiny Pretty Things by Sona Cheripotra and Daniel Clayton. If you find this title familiar that's because netflix very recently released a series based on the book um but speaking about the book tiny pretty things is in fact the first book in a duology chronicling the lives of Gigi, bet and june top dancers at the most prestigious ballet school in manhattan Gigi is the wide-eyed and free-spirited new girl at the academy as well as the only black student Bet is the stereotypical tiny music box-like ballerina, but she's burdened by being in the shadow of her star ballerina sister. And June battles her own demons, which takes the form of her Korean mother and a desperate desire to do anything to stop being always cast as the understudy and always being in the shadow of others. We meet more seduction and destruction as the male ballet dancers like Henri, Alec and Will come into the picture. And all the while, as friends and foes, twisted lies and terrible secrets float around the school, everyone is on edge trying to figure out who pushed Cassie Shaw. This is a fantastic mystery and drama read that will for sure have you gasping at the plot twists and pointing your toes in anticipation. Tiny Pretty Things by Sona Cheripotra and Danielle Clayton is this episode's Kiss and Cry book recommendation, as well as Netflix recommendation. So go check both of them out. That's Tiny Pretty Things by Sona Charipotra and Danielle Clayton. Yes, I loved the Netflix adaptation. It is 
very uh, sexual. So if you do not want to see those scenes, you can definitely fast forward through them. But I loved it. I think they really emphasized the mystery aspect of it in the Netflix adaptation. And it really like kept me watching. Besides the fact that like I love this shit. I love like dance, gymnastics, figure skating <laughs> shows. Exactly. Love it. It's, I love it. it. It's absolutely our brand. There are a few differences between book and TV show, but I think they dealt with it really, really well. And it's a great binge watch. It, very great binge watch, in my opinion. Yeah, it's truly fantastic. Great quarantine material. Yeah, I don't think we have anything else really for the kiss and cry, apart from wanting to wish all Russian Orthodoxes a very Merry Christmas for the 7th of January, which is coming up for them. Can't wait to see uh, lovely pictures of their celebrations because they go all out. But yeah, I think that is it for this episode. I'm Claudia and come chat with us at Let's Get Down Pod. That's L-U-T-Z Get Down Pod on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to work with us, shoot us an email at Let's Get Down Pod at gmail.com. If you like this podcast and think Makar Ignatov could be the best angsty teenage rom-com male protagonist, please get, leave us a review and give us some five-star love. We would really appreciate it. Thank you all so much for listening. We will talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.